Well, how do there, chums? This is I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys in the viewerverse, I'm doing a review. A review of the No Man's Skies Echoes update. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've already managed to unlock all the different gear and all the different perks that this update has to offer, and I've pretty much done everything that's in this list. This review, though, is not a review of the Voyager's Expedition. It's not out yet. That comes out, according to the game files, on the 31st of August. So I'll be doing a review of that separately. This is just on the content and the state of launch. Okay, people, so I'm going to jump on inside a game. I'll see you inside a game in a moment. Heck yes. Well, chums, I am back inside of game. Now, this is the look that I've gone for with my robot sort of construct. And I think he looks pretty darn freaking nice. I like the fact that you can have your actual wand out inside of the nexus when i say wand i mean staff this thing in my hands people yes i know where your minds went yes <laughs> anyways so there's that and look at that wand that that guy's got i've got to start calling them staffs yeah your staff's better than mine uh dang it yes okay well i've, I've got loads of pieces i can make new staffs but that one's freaking wonderful that he's gone anyways i've got one i've got my own staff so yeah i have thoroughly enjoyed this content but you still can't see each other's capes i'd imagine you oh no he's got a backpack on but it, yeah inside of multiplayer this guy over here look you can see that they're probably wearing a cape but it doesn't show yet so that hasn't quite been fixed i have noticed that the cape physics when you're a robot it, it doesn't wrap around and it hasn't wrapped around for a while and i'm wondering whether that's purposely done because of these new staffs but yes it seems to be that cape physics have changed they're not so fluid as they once were maybe they are working on bringing capes to everybody inside of the verse maybe they've downgraded the cape physics don't know that's just a guess but um hopefully we'll be able to see each other's capes at some stage at the moment i'm just running around sort of looking at people's staffs in awe but your staff is the same as my staff my staff is just different colored i like your crown he had yeah so there we go so there's a lot going for this when it comes to customization and how you can look and how you can feel and also these new ones are pretty cool what i would say though that feels a little bit rushed and a little bit sort of half implemented right now is this scrapping unit up here you can see here you my staff is actually inside of the machine right now and as it rotates around i saw this on wolfie the noobs channel but the actual hologram comes well outside the confines well outside the confines look it's gonna go straight through that construct yeah there you go and it's gonna go straight through me as well look at that yeah it's like you know, oh, i jumped it <laughs> it's like one of those crazy game shows you know but that, obviously they haven't tested this with the new wand do you think they would put new wands in we're putting this new machine what does the wand look in, like inside of the new machine i say new machine it's not a new machine at all people because what they've done is they've repurposed the ship scrapping unit and that's freaking obvious by the bloody display mate yeah and i, I think really what they ought to have done hello games is you know the multi-tool's not that bloody big why do you need a massive ship scrapping unit for something that's so poxy small I think it would have been a better idea to have made a smaller ship scrap, well, a smaller multi tool scrapping unit. Heck, this freaking thing over here would be more the right size, you know what I mean? But yeah, it would be cool if we got given the actual terminals for our bases for ship scrapping and also multi tool scrapping for our actual bases. And then we can make our own shipyards, we can make our own scrapping points or whatever. But this is well overkill for a multi tool scrapping unit, in my opinion. And the actual, um, the ones or staffs whatever you want to call these things need to be rescaled into it but it just feels that some of the stuff that you've put in this time hasn't overly been tested now currently there is a bug inside of game which is ending people's game saves where they shoot their actual own freighter and it completely scuppers their game save now, I don't really, really want to do this in my legacy save I will show you guys in my I'm going to do it in one of my saves. I do care about all of my saves, and hopefully I'm not going to scupper it. Um, I think I was lucky not to scupper it the last time I did it, but I'm going to show you this bug firsthand, people. I'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm in my 17-hour relaxed game save. So this is my relaxed game mode. Last saved inside of the old Nexus. Let's fly on out. Let's see 
if I can actually uh, recreate the bug that has ended people's game files. Do not do this at home, people. Yeah, I've put a video on my community tab of Elite Gamers, and they've done this, and it's completely knackered their game save. And we're talking, we're talking 600 hours. I really hope they get it fixed for Elite Gamers. Yeah, so here you go. Here's a freighter right now, my own freighter. I'm going to shoot my own freighter. Take that freighter. Thank you. And this is going to blow up my freighter. Now, the only trouble is, is a lot of people might call in the Nexus again, or they might fly into the nearest station or something, which automatically creates another save, and then it makes it almost impossible to recover your game save after that, peeps. You see there, I've blown it to smithereens. You're going to see in the top corner, just above my head, it goes crazy with all sorts of... Um, uh, well, it used to. Uh, I don't think they've patched it already. But at some point, your game sort of just breaks. My standing with the outlaws or with um, the system authorities should have changed. But it looks like I got away with that without um, the game crashing at the moment. You see, it looks like... Oh, it's, it's, it's going really slow. There you go. It crashed. And that's what's going to happen if you blow up your freighter. And a lot of the time, when you load back in again, sometimes it loads back in at the point in time... Of that horribleness so here we go let's let's load in i'm not going to edit this and i'm going to show you how you can actually save your game save if there's a problem but if you've already flown into the nexus or you've already flown into a freighter or you've already made another auto save it could be a bit of a problem so here's my 17 hour game save where is it going to load load in is it going to load in at the point in time of problems which it probably might but i'll show you if it does how to get around that all right so here we go if it loads me into the nexus i might be fine so it just depends when the autosave happened. If you're super unlucky, it can put you into a gameplay loop and completely bust the cage your game save. And uh, I, I know Elite Gamers has just done a review and he's not too overly happy with, with anything that's happened at the moment. Ah, it's still going a bit slow, so I've got problems. So if I go to here, I need to go to the earliest restore point that I can. So I'm going to go back to the 21st of the 11th. Yes, I'm going to restore to that. Be very quick in doing it as well, or else your game is just going to crash again. I know that's as far back for me, but that, I haven't played this for freaking ages on this Relax Save. That's the last time I played it. Hopefully you've got something a little bit more recent. Something that I put on my community tab is every time there is a new update, make a backup of your save. Hopefully you've backed up in the last day or two when this update come out. There you go. I'm back in the Nexus. My freighter should be all intact. I haven't blown it up yet. There you go. Issue averted. It should be that simple, people. But yeah, for Hello Games to have left that in. Okay, right. So I'm going to Hello Games. I've just made it so you can blow up any freighter in the game. What will the community do? What will players do? Well, they might blow up each other's freighter. You know what? Some silly sod might go and blow up their own freighter. I'm going to test that. Because that's what game testing is all about. Think about what the player's going to do and do it and see if it breaks the freaking game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I've got to say on that. Um, Okay, so next off, people, something a little bit more positive inside of game is this new race. We now have six races to choose from, and I must say I am loving the autophage race. Um, I am already an autophage. That's a bit freaking weird, isn't it? But anyway, if I go into heads, and I've unlocked a shed load of different heads now, and all of them are pretty darn cool, and all of them are slightly res reminiscent of stuff that you've seen in the sort of games and stuff. Okay, so, oh, there we go. Oh, the zoom out is working now. It is on the head anyway. It wasn't working yesterday on the torso for some reason. But here you go, look. So that one there looks very much like a droid, one of the battle droids from Clone Wars in Star Wars. It really does. And you've got this guy, which looks like some kind of cyberpunk. Yeah, pretty darn sweet. you got this that looks almost cat-like. Yeah, pretty darn nice. I'm fairly sure a couple of cat lovers out there in the verse would like that, or a little pug dog. You got this guy, looks very Iron Robot-esque, doesn't it? You got this one. Pretty nice. I like that one quite a lot. That one's pretty cool. It almost looks like Chappie. You know the, the movie Chappie? It looks a little bit like Chappie. And you got this guy here. I like that one. That's one of my favourites. That's one of my faves, that. I really like that one. And you got this guy. That looks more like something like Game of Frickin' Thrones, doesn't it? The King of the Frickin' North, or whatever he was. The Frost Giant King, I don't know. 
You got this guy that just looks like his head's been squashed. Uh, looks like a staple gun, that one. But uh, almost reminiscent of that other game, Stray, with the cat and all the robots running around in alleys and stuff. This is very dog-like. I really like that one, the canine-type dog head. That's very cool, isn't it? Very awesome. And then we got this one here, which we've all seen, I guess, or the Atlantean head or whatever. And we got that guy head, which, yeah, that looks like a torch, just been welded onto a neck there. I don't like this one. I have nothing good to say about this one, so I'm not going to say much, to be honest. I like the eye. Yeah, that's about it. This one is my favourite. As you know, I've been rocking around with that one. That one's pretty darn nice. Looks like the old short circuit Johnny Five. You got this one, which I think looks oversized for the body. I'm not a massive fan. If it was a bit smaller, I quite like that one. This one looks like the medical droid from the old Sentinels, which is pretty sweet. And that one, which is the Atlantid head. Yes, which we've all seen, I guess. And that one. And that's that's pretty much the old ensemble. I'm just going to exit out. I'll keep my look and feel for now, people. But yes, have Hello Games worked this into VR in a roundabout way? I mean, I know you can't see yourself in VR, but when you walk around in VR, what happens? Especially if you've got your new sort of magic wand. I mean, look at the animation of that. Are you? Is it automatically going to do that with your hand? Let's go and find out what happens in VR. Okay, people, well, as you can see, I'm in VR. And yes, the hands look pretty darn cool, don't they? They look really freaking awesome. Look, the joints have all been done. You can see all the rusted textures that I chose in the appearance modifier appearing as they should, which is great. But as soon as I walk, look at that. I don't know whether it's because of the head that I chose or the body I chose. But either way, my head has come off of my shoulders. And as you can see, I can't I can't see my multi-tool right now. I have got the right multi-tool actually selected. There it is, the magic wand. But I'll go show you what that wand looks like down on the actual planet. So let's get in my ship and I'm going to fly on down there. I'll see you down there, people. So, yeah. Okay, people, we're back on the planet. Let's get my multi-tool. Okay. Well, that's just jarring, isn't it? I mean, if I wanted to walk with that properly, I'd have to bend my wrist around like mental. I mean, that's 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 the, the position. It just looks like a very long freaking multi-tool. And it acts like one, too. I was kind of hoping we'd get new modules for these. You know, new technologies to find. You know, like our jetpack trails that look really freaking gnarly right now with all sorts of effects. Yeah, sorry about my body getting in the way of the view there. But it's... I would like to have seen a whole load of new sort of technologies come in that were more area effecty. you know? Different sorts of things. I mean, yeah, okay, you can point and shoot it like it's a multi-tool, but it doesn't look like a multi-tool. It would have been cool to have seen something really cool happen with it, you know? I just think they missed a trick with putting these in. I think if they had area effect, like almost like Tesla lightning rods that auto-arc and hit things and stuff like that, it could have been a real nice addition. But now it just feels like a new cosmetic overhaul to a multi-tool. And talking of which, people, let's put this one away, because inside of this menu, inside of VR, something that I prefer far more than these wizardy sticks is the latest multi-tools. Come on, let's, uh, let's move. I, I want to go over. I want to go over one more space. This one. Heck yes, I need to show you this, people, because this is this is freaking awesome. Take a look at that beauty. Now that's awesome, isn't it? I really like these new Atlas multi-tools and in VR on close-up inspection. Oh, I could just showcase these multi-tools off in VR and just talk about these. You know, like how Ricey does Ricey's Starship Emporium. I could just do VR multi-tool inspection videos because look at this multi-tool. Look at it. It's freaking amazing. Yes, I could be a weapons specialist, Captain Steve episode. I mean, that just looks freaking insane. Very awesome. That is a thing of beauty. Yes, yeah, so I might start doing a few multi-tool videos on finding these and where I find them, showcase them, keep one slot empty, because 
I can scrap them anyway, because we've got the scrapping unit now. So you know what? I might be doing a new playlist very soon, people, of multi-tool hunting with Captain Steve. I might replace my Tuesdays of, you know, where I'm doing random portal investigations. I can still go for a random portal, but when I get to the other side, find what multi-tool lies within inside of a monolith. Let us know if you like that idea. Hercules. But yeah, new content. These are all procedurally generated. Apparently there's hundreds of different combinations out there. I'm gonna go do some hunting of those. So yes, extra content has been delivered in people. It really okay, has. Now something that I'm getting quite a lot is visual tearing, especially on planets that have like rain. Whenever it's raining and I land on a planet, I get this weird stuff happen. I mean, look at that. Look at what's going on. This is PlayStation 5, but this happens inside of VR as well. I had this happen inside of VR and it, it made me feel pretty darn nauseous. Now, as I had the VR footage up earlier, um, what I was supposed to say is also when you turn quite fast, it blurs like massively. I've done a separate review just on the PlayStation VR and the Fove rendering. But yeah, this sort of stuff I'm seeing now inside of normal mode. I don't know whether you guys are, but it happens on rainy planets and especially these uh, sort of swamp-like planets. And it stays with you the whole time you're here. It's, it's, it's weird. I, I have no idea what's going on. It's a visual glitch that's just really odd. So that's another thing, people. Anyways, what I was going to show you is with the new multi-tool, uh, not that one, but my magic wand one. If I bring up my magic wand multi-tool, Dilly dilly day, pow. Inside of here, I've put in the new technology. So here's a new technology. Let's go and charge that up. Chick pow pow. Go back in. Whoopsie. I should have just done it there and then. Locate camp. Right, so I'm going to locate camp. I'll see you over at that camp and I'll show you one of the new additions. So here we go, people. I'm landing at this campsite. And when you land, you would notice it is not an actual campsite per se in the way of campsites. It's just some sort of random feature. And it doesn't look like anything's there, but you see all these dust clouds. If you initiate a scan, kaboom! Look at that, you've just magicked people into the freaking verse. Now, some of these are awesome. When you talk to these guys, they, you can offer to give them some help. You can also learn some sort of language. So if I go over here, I can give them the gift. There you go, have a radiant shard. And uh, yeah, they're going to learn me some words and all sorts of stuff. There you go. My standing has increased, but sometimes they give you a learn. Oh, you can learn words from these, practice language. And then you can you know, request dialect help and learn a word or two from these guys. So there you go. So that's something I need to do. Now it's more content for me to do. I can go around, talk to these autophages, learn their lingo. Heck yes, why the fudge not? But not only that, they also give you procedural missions. So let's hit on up a procedural mission. Now these procedural missions are very similar to one another. When I read this in the patch notes and it said procedural missions, I thought there'd be a whole repertoire. Take some photos or, you know, go and find a crashed ship and salvage it. Go and attack a new Sentinel Dreadnought or whatever they are, the Outlaw Dreadnoughts. Stuff that's interesting. But no, what you've got in here is about two different types of mission. One is go and find another missing autophage, and the other is help repair something. So here you go, what's this one? Construct planet, consider delta in Euro system in need of chromatic metal. I've just got to give them chromatic metal. All right, so if I hit start mission on that one, there's also a bug with this too. If you go around and talk to all of these, okay, so you go here, and you go to offer assistance, okay, and I'm going to accept that one as well. Look, he wants chromatic metal too. All right, so that's great. I go over to this guy, talk to this guy, and offer assistance. Do you want chromatic metal by chance? No. He wants me to go and do something else with a Sentinel Menace, which is fine. Yeah, okay. Fighting a Sentinel Menace? I haven't had that mission. I haven't had that one. I've only had two types. That's now a third type. So actually, I could be wrong on my sort of um, speculations here. I guess I could call it speculations, but I have not seen many. Oh, fudging heck. I went and scanned again. Hello, mate. Offer assistance. And this one, he wants, he wants, he wants help with Sentinel Menace. So I could choose those two, and it does them both at the same time. So at the moment, I've got, I've got, then I've got the dialed-in one for the chromatic metal. I'm just looking to see if any of them want help with chromatic metal again. Okay, he wants rusted metal. I'm going to start that anyway. Okay. Now all I need to do is go back over to the one where I've actually completed it. So if I go over to my log, go back to one page. 
do this one here. They want chromatic metal. If I go over and speak to that one with the mission above its head now, sometimes it completes all of them. So boom, done. That's given me that. My autophage level has gone up. And I think it may have automatically completed the other one. Let me just check. I don't think it has this time. It did last time I did this. All right. Maybe it's been fixed. Who freaking knows? Uh, return to construct Lofo. Oh, yeah, over there. No, it looks like you have to do them one at a time. But on the when I was doing this originally, it worked. I could, I could complete multiple missions at once. I've got shed loads of this stuff. But I have also found the duplication technique. Because, yeah, any duplication method works with this stuff. I mean, I've got freaking reams of it. Look. I've got the whole freaking lot. I've got the whole freaking set. I Pokemon this bloody thing. Right, so heading over to here, you're going to see all the new products that the autophages have to offer inside of here. Is it? You can buy five. You don't need five. Just buy three. If you try putting in four, it breaks the technology. So there's no point in buying more than three. And then heading down here, you've got all this sort of stuff. Oh, look, there's a few new ones inside of here, which is pretty nice. So at least I need to go around a few more and see if I can buy a couple more. But I might as well buy a couple of these. And look, there's all different wand parts here. My inventory is full now, but I could buy all of those and construct a new wand that would look freaking great. Freaking gravy, Davy. So if I sell a few things, I might as well sell some of that. Um, the additional moats that I've got, mine know, but... Yeah, let's uh, let's sell. I sell my portable refiners. Why the fudge not? I send. I sell. I do. That might have just uh, freed up my space a little. Let's uh, buy these then. Chicka pow, chicka pow, chicka pow. Nice. There you go. So that's pretty nice. So go and visit more machines, and hopefully you get more parts and more autophagy stuff going on, and you can make your own wands. So if I go over to this machine now, we can make another wand. Here we go. So here we are staff assembly. And I've got loads of wand parts I can choose. I quite like that one. That's pretty nice. That one's cool as well with a crystal in it. I think Jason will like that one because it's purple. This one's got a robot head on the top. I could go for a robot head one or I could go for this one. Runic Focus. I mean, it's just look and feel. It's just cosmetics, really, people. Oh, you've got Runic Core as well. Oh, that, that, that looks like... That's not a middle section. Or is that a bottom of it? Okay. Uh, who, who knows we've got recycled um, what's that one in the middle salvaged or fiberglass i've got two fiberglass ones or recycled pole we go for recycled pole actually i don't like the recycled pole let's uh, let's put in a different one let's go for salvaged then yeah that's cut quite a nice look to it but what's going on at the bottom exactly all right fine we, we do that one then let's have a look at that so that's now constructed this one, which is pretty darn freaking awesome, isn't it? Okay, compare. And I can only but exchange this one. I haven't got a free multi-tool slot right now. So, you know, you can just hit decline, though, and you, you get to keep all your parts, you know. So, yeah, I haven't used them all. At least I hope I blinking haven't. Let me just uh, let's have a look, see if they're in there. No, they're not. That's cool. Hopefully I've got all my parts back. But there you go, that's another thing you can do. But I think Hello Games need to gift us with an extra three multi-tool slots or something for this one. Because, yeah, you can now make custom multi-tools. I say custom multi-tools, it's only the staffs. I kind of wish that they would add this sort of element in for maybe ship customization. They could do it this way. Or even for normal multi-tools, do it this way. So you find stocks and hilts and things. I hope they expand this idea out a little. It's got freaking legs, people. Anyways, now I'm going to head on over to the patch notes. But the actual game itself, I feel that this being end-game content is awesome. It's added a bit more balance in. You know, for new players, it's quite overwhelming. To have this sort of locked away as end game content i feel was a good idea but i feel it was very poorly implemented and i'll get on to why in a second well i do i'm back and i'm on the patch notes over on the tinter web now these patch notes are freaking awesome they read like the credits of a marvel story i mean look at the freaking scroll bar up here people it's massive anyways it goes on and it goes into everything but what it doesn't tell you is the main essential thing how do you start this new content 
When this went live, I watched Miyogi bumbling around in space, not knowing how to get it started. It'd be nice if these patch notes said you need to trigger the actual update by doing X, Y, and Z. And there are actual three prerequisites, three that really need to be done before this actually starts. So you need to have completed the purge. So you need to do the Artemis storyline and arc and do the purge. You also need to have visited a harmonic camp which is one of those sort of campsites where you see the autophages in parts. And I think you even need to speak to one of the autophage heads or something to get the actual content to start in a roundabout way. And there's one other prerequisite as well. The Traces of Metal mission of all missions. So that one, you need to actually have a settlement if you're on pretty much every platform apart from Switch. On Switch, you have to jump 20 times to trigger that bit of content. So they've chosen some pretty obscure ones to have done. If it was myself, I probably would have only used the, the harmonic camps. If you've found a harmonic camp and you've spoken to an autophage head, I mean, let's face it, they're on a dissonant system. And to find them, you have to do a load of attacking of sentinels, those new spider walker ones, which you need to be pretty OP with anyway, to actually trigger a harmonic camp. So if you've managed to get to a harmonic camp using one of those echo locators, which I think needs to be essential as part of the key. So yes, you've managed to get yourself tooled up enough to take out those corrupted sentinels. At that point, I think you should be able to unlock this. I don't think you should have had to have gone through the purge. I don't think you should have had to have, um, you know, done the Traces of Metal mission, especially since there's two trigger points for it, one for Switch and one for all other platforms. That just makes it confusing as heck. So I would have said the best trigger would have been Harmonic Camps using an Echo Locator, meaning that you would have taken out one of those spider tank sentinels, meaning that you're pretty much end game. And that would have been the best trigger, I think. But adding in three different things, and one of those being that you've got to have played through the whole story arc, is is a little bit too far, I think. I mean, yes, it makes it endgame content, and I've been banging on that they need to put in endgame content. And a lot of this is kind of really nice as endgame perks for players that have played to find these new Atlantid multi-tools at Corvax monoliths which is another thing that's inside of these patch notes they tell you how to find the Atlantid sort of um you know monoliths or whatever and trigger them which is great but i don't know whether it's going to work for every player or whether you have had to have done the two new story arcs before you can get the Atlantid multi-tool because i've made a video on how to get the Atlantid multi-tool and i've had new players that have got to the point where they've got to a monolith and they're not seeing it there on a Corvac system so I don't know if you got to do the stories as, as, as part of that. It'd be nice if they even put that in this area of here. This, here's a new Atlantid multi-tools. And it tells you how to go about finding these new Atlantid multi-tools. Look, there you go, ancient monoliths or whatever. I mean, if I do control F and type story or lore, it comes up as well. So if I put story, bang, because you get new story at these monoliths too. Now I'm going to be doing a playthrough every Tuesday where I go to these, unlock the lore, pick up the multi-tool, and then I'm thinking about logging out after making a save, putting on the VR, and doing a VR close-up inspection of said multi-tool, and then go scrap it or something. So that's what I'm hoping to bring to my channel. So I've got new content to be doing on this, and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy unlocking all the lore. I also want to learn all the autophage language as well, so I might do a little bit of that during the Tuesdays. But yeah, I've got new content to cover. Is it going to keep the actual universe and the playerverse gripped? With enthusiasm to watch those videos, we can only but wait and see. But I'm hoping it's content for me. I'm hoping it's content for you. I hope you guys want to go and hunt down these new multi-tools. I'm hoping that you want to go and find a new lore. And I hope you're bothered about learning the autophage sort of language. Because we know that there's parts 3 and 4 of the ARG. What's interesting, over on the Twitterverse, Sean didn't mention the ARG inside of the list of items like he did last time. I'll jump over to the Twitterverse and show you what I mean. Okay, so here I am on the Sean of the Murray's Twitter page. If you want to call it Twitter now, I don't know what we're supposed to call this blinking place anymore. It still says Twitter.com down at the bottom, so I'm going for Twitter.com. Yes, let's scroll on down. So here's the list of things that Echoes included. Epic freighter battles. Brilliant, but how do we trigger them? You can see inside of this review, I've been told one way. I tried that way, going to a level 3 conflict zone. Didn't work for me. What's the trigger? What's the trigger for the freighter battles? Customizable staff. 
freaking love them love the customizable staffs and yes i'm gonna go and hunt down staff parts and build out my repertoire of staffs brilliant robotic race i would say that they could do with some visual improvements though on the customizable staff in vr and it would have been nice if like i say they you added in some new modules for the staff that actually does like area effect damage or you hold it out and you know it arcs out electricity auto lock on or something a bit like a tesla stick or something make them more magical i wanted to be a space where but that's my, my my own expectations you see a magical wizardy staff you don't expect it to act like a freaking multi-tool do you it's just <sighs> expectations i need to set my expectations in check that's my own fault i'm not going to knock, knock you down on that but the, how they look visually inside of vr could have been worked on a little bit differently i guess but then again how do you make it look like a multi-tool when it's not a multi-tool and that takes me back to maybe you should have redesigned them to do something other than what a normal multi-tool does yeah okay fine it might not be able to be a terrain manipulator but would you expect that <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It could just blow a giant crater in the ground. You could sort of have a little target lock on, lock onto where you want, and boom, it pretty much makes a crater. That could have worked. Anyway, robotic race. I love the emoji that you've used there. I didn't even know there was a, a mechanical alarm emoji. But yeah, robotic race. I really like the robotic race. I love them, in fact. I think they're awesome. I think they look very in keeping with the staff, and they look like space wizards, and they really like them couldn't fault them i like them a lot it would have been lovely if you could have given them you know that ai mod that's inside of the matrix where you talk to them and it actually answers back that would have been next level stuff to add in another language that we've now got to learn it looks like you've sped it up in learning it which I'm, i think is brilliant i hope that you take some of that and implement it across all races so we learn the races languages a little bit quicker because at the moment, there seems to be a massive grind in that area, especially with the Atlas words, too. If you can speed up learning words with doing meaningful tasks, it's like I mentioned earlier about all those badges that you're popping for, um, you know, learning, for, for doing stuff against those different races or those different factions. When you get a faction badge up to its max, when you hit claim, it could give you another 10, 50 words and depending on the level you know so you get the language unlocked a bit quicker even that as a reward because it's a time saver it's a time saver for the player and sometimes a time saver for the player can be better than getting yourself a new ship or something if it saves you two days of reading knowledge stones or hitting up knowledge stones atlas multi-tool freaking love the atlas multi-tool and they are super cool you've chose the shades yes heck yes really like the atlas multi-tools they're freaking great it's strange that you called them atlas multi-tools here but inside the patch notes you call them alanted multi-tools i'm hoping that you expand them out and i've also noticed that sentinel pillars not that it's in the patch notes that when you go to the sentinel pillars sometimes you find a sentinel multi-tool not just the exotic sort of beautiful hoover type looking multi-tools but you also find sentinel multi-tools inside of the sentinel pillars that makes sense lovely hollow displays of bases couldn't really overly care less for them myself but i think people can make some pretty nice menageries and put all their pets on display you know like when i'm doing the egg giveaways if i manage to add one of those pets into my nice discoveries i can actually put those by the podiums of where people can go to get that 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 sort of pet which actually I do like them and I can see use usability and, and versatility with those and I think base builders are going to love them the new story oh my days heck yes I love what you're doing with all this new story but this is what I'm saying about this whole list nowhere in this list does it say I ARG part three or part four so what's happened to the ARG stuff is it inside the game files or is it not is this part of the ARG arc or is it not I'm trying to understand whether there's going to be more updates from Hello Games this year or even next that sort of fills in the ARG gaps. How long is this Void Mother going to be stretched out inside of the, the verse? And that's another thing with the Void and also the Realm of Glass and also realisation of the Void Mother. One part, a little bit of a spoiler here, people. I'm not going to spoil anything too in too great detail, but there's one part where you interact with the Atlas and for a moment, the Atlas goes purple. It goes purple. And I'm wondering whether the Void Mother is just going to be Atlas stations, but instead of them being red, they're going to be purple. I made this joke beforehand in my speculation videos and inside my 1616 podcast with Beeble and stuff. What if they implemented it like this? This is how I think they could implement it in the most bare bones, 
sort of simplest way that they could. And it looks like that might be on the cards. I'm not 100% sure. Weapon trading. Now, that almost feels like you might be able to swap your weapon with another player. I think you can give them the actual um, parts for the actual staff and then go to a concert and they, they can build their staff out. So technically, yes, you can trade those parts of the staff with one another, which I think is really cool. If they did implement this sort of modular sort of aspect to all multi-tools and even into ship hunting, so you can actually get ship parts in the same way. I mean, they're taking up, they're taking up shed loads of my freaking inventory space. Inside this room, the review, you saw I had to sell a load of stuff to get those parts. So that could work. If they could add this modular build system to every sort of aspect, ships, and to other multi-tools, I know it might sort of destroy some of the community when it comes to ship hunting in a roundabout way, but you've still got to get those parts. So those parts you can get maybe by scrapping your ship. You know, who knows? I'm hoping that they move on with this a little bit further and think, hold on, there's a lot to be gained from this. Anyway, Voyager's Expedition. It's not out yet, but it's inside of this list. It is coming. Now, inside of the game files, there is a timer that states that it's going to start on the 31st of August. And I'm, I'm highly looking forward to that one. It looks great. So hopefully we'll be hitting up the Voyager's Expedition. The rewards for this one this time, though. Mm. OK, so you get some visual enhancements for your pets, which are like little feet sort of panels you can get yourself a flying sort of head droid that follows you around a bit like laylaps hopefully it doesn't make annoying noises like laylaps makes but yeah I'm, i am looking forward to that expedition i do like doing expeditions it's extra content at the end of the day isn't it space combat depth with the new frigates that have been where well, the new freighters have been added heck yes but this one and that one are the same thing but yes it makes your list look a little bit bigger but they're, they're pretty much the same thing torpedo frigates yes yeah, so the actual frigates that are with those giant dreadnoughts actually fire torpedoes out that you have to intercept and blow up before they blow up the other freighters around which is cool in fact the improved space combat inside this review you saw me take out another freighter just any old freighter but what i didn't understand is how i could actually disable the shields it'd be nice if they had actual shield components on them i'm thinking you know where you fly in on top if there was a shield things there star wars destroyers rings a bell <laughs> ship trenches yeah they look pretty pretty awesome pretty cool you blow the caps off and then there's these little pylons that come out you blow those up too yeah pretty nice twitch campaign i don't really do twitch but for those that do it's a welcome addition pirate faction heck yes new outlaw faction and also the robotic faction that gives me a, a sneaky suspicion that they might pad factions out they might do more with factions i hope they do i hope there's more alignment to factions and maybe monthly or weekly faction missions that you can run to get yourself some new sort of stuff and depending where your um, ranking is with that faction maybe it ups the rewards that you get maybe you might get some new jazzy armor you might get some new decals or something i hope they build on that i hope they don't just leave it as it is now i hope they build on it and bring in some content aligned to the actual factions because at the moment you get the highest medals and what does it do Me. PSVR and Switch visuals. PSVR 2, I've done a whole review on what I think of the PlayStation VR 2 overhaul. But in summary, it has made it a lot sharper. The distance draw is a heck of a lot better. But what I'm finding is if I turn too fast, that foveic rendering, because your visual point is changing the whole time as you're spinning, I find that it pixelates the whole screen a little. It takes it down in visual hue. And on planets where it's raining, or if there's a lot going on, the frame rate drops massively to the point that it turned my stomach, people. I didn't really put a lot of that into my actual review, but I told people about it. But it seems to be on the rainy planets and all your textures mess up on the rainy planets as well. You get visual distortions, just like I put inside of this uh, video. So although that they've fine tuned some of the graphics, they haven't done that on all planets in all weather conditions and it doesn't feel overly tested. And um, I think I'm just going to make myself a little bit bigger on screen now, peeps, because that's that's pretty much everything that I've got for you. But I think if I was to rate this overall, I'm going to give this update a nine out of ten. And a lot of people are going to say, well, that's really high considering the amount of bugs and things and jankiness and stuff that you've actually outlined. 
Well, I think this has brought in quite a lot of content and room for people to do stuff, especially with unlocking the lore, learning the new autophage language, finding all the different staff parts, swapping staff parts with friends, finding the new Atlantid or Atlas multi-tools inside of the actual monoliths. It's all lovely content. That's all stuff that's going to keep me busy, I'd imagine, for a good couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months. And then when you tie in the fact that there's going to be an expedition in between that, and all these new sort of rocket pack trails to unlock, I think this is going to keep me busy for some time. The only thing is, with Starfield also dropping, for all those that are on Xbox or PC, I think it's given them quite an easy decision to just jump over and play Starfield, and then come back and play this whenever they're feeling a little bit, you know, burnt out on Starfield. But I think this is still an awesome game, and the actual update itself has brought in a lot for me to be doing alongside Starfield. Is it enough to make me feel that Starfield and No Man's Sky can share the same space? Well, that was an easy decision for me. I'm definitely going to be doing No Man's Sky as my first game on this channel. Starfield is going to be secondary. I'm also hoping to bring in Robocop during September. And at the end of September, I'm hoping to pick up the Cyberpunk DLC. Now, what I would say is I'm kind of thankful that the actual content that's been put into No Man's Sky is good, but it's not to the point where I think, oh my God, I'm going to play the heck out of it because it's freed me up to sort of try other avenues, which I'm going to be bringing to the channel anyway. So yeah, I'm going to give this a nine out of 10 because I think this is the best update that we've had since Origins. I think this is even better than Endurance and all the stuff that they gave us for freighter bases. As much as I love that, that was great. Um, however, I feel this one is probably the best best update best update since we've had since Origins and Origins I think I gave like a, a 9.8 or something this I'm giving although I said a 9 it's more like an 8.8 .8. it's it's close to a 9 so close that I might as well give it a freaking 9 okay and I think it's well worth that 9 after they get get rid of that game destroying bug with destroying your own freighter I mean what were they thinking and I'm fairly sure in the next couple of weeks or whatever we're going to have all the patches out all the sort of updates out that enhance this massively and some of the other sort of bugs that I pointed out are just visual cosmetic-y type ones that are a bit weird. Where this really falls down though on the launch of this one is communication. Communication would have been key and they could have easily done it in the patch notes. It's so easily avoided. There's so much frustration with players not knowing how to trigger things. I still don't know how to make those giant dreadnoughts spawn in. I've gone and banished three of my frigates in hope of getting some of these free new ones just to show them off in a video. And for the life of me, I can't get a Dreadnought to appear. <laughs> so, hello games, how do you trigger a Dreadnought? Yes, and it would have been nice to have known the actual lore and mission triggers, because me, I found it by accident. And I said, well, this is how I found it to my audience. People were doing it, getting frustrated and saying, it didn't work for me, Captain Steve, what else do I do? I'm like, I, I don't freaking know. I didn't dev this. I didn't put this together. I reached out to Hello Games and said, you know, could you put something on Twitter, please, just to let people know how it's triggered? What are the prerequisites? And I haven't seen anything come up as yet. I'm hoping maybe in their next patch notes that they put out, maybe they could put in the exact triggers for both the uh, Dreadnoughts and also the, the lore. And also make it clear on how you find the Atlas multi-tools. Do you have to do the two story arcs first? Or can a new player go straight to a Corvax monolith right now with some Elantium in their pocket and freaking trigger it? I don't know, I'm not a new player. I can't test that unless I make a whole new game save, get myself to a dissonant system, get myself some Elantium, then jump to a callback system. It's a lot for me to do to let my viewers know. Where if Hello Games just put it in the patch notes because they made the freaking game and they made this new update and put prerequisites by each of these things inside of the patch notes. In fact, you could probably do that. Hit on up the people that made these patch notes for you and say, please, could you just put a prerequisite box by each of these three things? The new Atlantic multi-tools, the new story arc, and also how to trigger a dreadnought. If you put the prerequisites there, all the triggers, fantastic. I probably would have given this a 9.5 or even a 10 because it's a freaking awesome update and I can tell you put a lot of work into it and a lot of love. But I would say there are a few things that still need some polish and a lot of that is inside the PlayStation VR 2. And yeah, a lot of these bugs needn't to happen. If you just think, I've put this into the game, what does it look like in the game and tested it? I mean, it's like the multi-tool. I know it's just a visual thing of it spinning around, but come on. 
And also, the players are going to blow up their own freighters as soon as you can say you can destroy any freighter in game. What are the players going to do? They're going to blow up their own freighters or their mate's freighter. Well, what happens when they do that? Let's test that. Wasn't done. Clearly wasn't done. I know you fixed it. Well, you're fixing it. There's going to be a patch coming out any time now. But there are some players that have lost countless hours of save. Until next time, people, that's my rating. A nine, well, an 8.8 .8 to a 9 out of 10. I hope you feel that's fair. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.